Dr. Manimanan, are there any skip lesions in, yeah, in the pelvic lymph nodes? And what percentage of the patients of lymphocyte needed surgery? There are skip lesions, and Studer's study has has you know has talked about it. It's in the range of 10 to 15 percent. So if you have uh, uh, aggressive cancer, uh, Gleason 8 and above, a PSA of uh, 10 and above, then you should worry about skip lesions and do uh, an extended node dissection. My own feeling is uh, the bang for the buck is by using adjuvant treatment, not by the extended lymph node dissection. Um, so, so if you're removing more nodes, um, are you really having a therapeutic benefit? And that, that's the concern I have. It is, uh, we, we had the same argument for breast cancer. Uh, in fact, if you want to understand prostate cancer, it's very good to read the breast cancer literature. And a large scale randomized trial showed no benefit from extended axillary node dissection to limited axillary node dissection and a lot of complications from the extended axillary node dissection. This is multi-institutional, multinational, randomized clinical trial, which has not been done for prostate cancer. So, brief answer to the question, are there skip lesions? Yes, it's around 10 to 20 percent. It's usually seen in people with aggressive disease. But then you're only looking for it in people with aggressive disease. You're not doing extended dissections, uh, excepting a loca uh, in, in this paper uh, for early prostate cancer. Dr. Menon, just simple question. Any skip lesion in that those skip lesions which were beyond the standard template were posterior standard template were negative? Yes. Yes. So these are patients who uh, had uh, isolated lesions uh, uh, above the external iliac uh, so, uh, the so, diurtic, yes. so there is the advantage of doing a skip lesion. Otherwise, if you have done only standard one, you might, may not you, give adjuvant therapy. You would so not by have, doing yes. this, probably you will give those patients adjuvant therapy because now do you know that disease is systemic. Yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, I, I, absolutely. I, and I don't want to go into the theory behind it. Um, Alok showed Messing's data, which is the only randomized trial that shows that uh, uh, adjuvant uh, hormonal therapy helps in people with lymph node positive disease. There were 12 patients in that study. Out of the 100, uh, two were omitted, and then you looked at the patients who had uh, a lymph node metastases and who were helped by adjuvant therapy, it was 12. So this whole theory is based on 12 patients, and Dr. Messing has given up doing it himself because what he was dealing with uh, was not the T1C disease that we're dealing with in the US. For the Indian scene, does it make sense? You are seeing patients with Gleason 9 and a PSA of 50, absolutely. If you're doing a surgery, do extended lymph node dissections. Use early uh, adjuvant radiation therapy. Use uh, uh, adjuvant uh, hormonal therapy because a patient who dies from prostate cancer, I would use everything. But if you are seeing a patient with a focal Gleason 6 um, with a PSA of uh, 2 to 4, it's highly unlikely that this patient will have lymph node disease. We saw uh, that it's anywhere from 1% uh, in the parton nomograms to 20% uh, to, uh, in a loc's hands. Uh, of that 20%, maybe 10% would have skip lesions, so the benefit would be only for 2% of the patients. And, and, and that's fine. I mean, 2% would be the upper uh, limit of benefit. 0.2% would be the lower uh, uh, extent of benefit. Um, if you looked at uh, uh, the, uh, the Briganti uh, nomogram, uh, where he, he looked at PN0 versus, versus PN6, at 10 years, the survival benefit went from 1.5% to 2.2%, was 0.7% at 10 years. So as long as you understand that that's what you're trying to get, it's, it's fine. So what, 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 what but, those patients who had skip lesion positive also has a positive margin or something indicating like, so that we know that they were aggressive disease and uh, if, do patients with um, 
um, with uh, skip lesions also have positive margins. Um, the big study was, uh, the one that I remember was Tudor's study. These, this is a typical Indian patient. I mean, it happened to be Swiss patient, but uh, was, uh, uh, the median PSA was uh, 20%, uh, was 20. The median PSA was 20, very high PSAs. Uh, and 21% uh, had T3B disease. I don't think they looked at margins because it, it, it was very aggressive disease, uh, had palpable nodules, T2, uh, T2 disease. Um, in that study, paradoxically, they didn't look at Gleason score, which, uh, which surprises me. But if you look at that paper, there was no Gleason score. Uh, again, that would be a substratification that you can use. The reason I changed the practice of uh, doing extended lymph node dissection in most of the patient is because I'm dealing patients uh, most, uh, more than 30% of my patient population is Caribbean or Latin. So these are the patients which are more, which are closer to Indian patient or Indian healthcare systems. So that's the reason. Yeah. Uh, Manon, what are your current thoughts on the perineural invasion, which many pathologists are very fond of uh, reporting even today? Perineural invasion. Um, perineural invasion on the biopsy? Mm -hmm. That doesn't matter. Yeah, because they are still very fond of reporting, yeah. and I want to know, yeah. is there any thoughts on that? So, perineural invasion on a biopsy means nothing. Perineural invasion on a radical prostatectomy specimen, particularly if the nerves are outside the prostate, indicates more aggressive disease. What percentage of your patients of lymphocyl required surgical correction? Uh, so, our incidence of lymphocyl is around 2% over a seven-year follow-up. So th this is not a 30-day lymphocele, but it's cumulative. Uh, and in that uh, two percent, maybe half of them uh, required uh, surgical correction. Um, if you get delayed lymphocyles, you usually do need to correct them surgically because you're only picking them up if they're symptomatic. Those are the only patients that presented with lymphedema. Uh, all the other patients. Uh, uh, and it's maybe it's different from uh, maybe different from Korea, maybe different from in in India. I, I quite agree, but in the U.S., if you get lymphedema, they have a lymphocele until proven otherwise. The typical patient you were talking about with a PSA of nine, uh, 50 and Gleason of nine, like if we have done a, a radical prostatectomy and with wide margins. After that, if we don't even remove the lymph nodes and we automatically tell him that we can offer the adjuvant therapy. So what do you feel that if uh, we have not removed the lymph nodes and, but we have given the adjuvant therapy and in, uh, instead of that remove the lymph nodes also, so does it change the prognosis? I, I think uh, your approach is very valid and it makes sense, but that's not the standard of care. The standard of care is not to do surgery, but to use hormones and radiation. But uh, one more thing about this is like if bone scan, everything is negative, the extent of local complications is reduced if we do the radical prostate. Yeah, so I agree. I mean, I, I, and I would do it. That, that's, that's who we end up operating on the most. Um, but it's not, um, there, there's no, very high level evidence that uh, many of these patients will get local problems if you give them hormones and radiation. Uh, I do it because I think the cure rates are, are, are higher. Um, you know, I'm not saying that you'll get cure rates of 99%, uh, and I'm defining cure as not dying of prostate cancer. Very clearly, uh, in our uh, retrospective analysis and in other analyses, uh, the cure rate was twice as high with debulking treatment as without debulking treatment it was twice as high. Now, uh, we're talking about a cure rate going from 25% uh, um, to 50%. We're not talking about it going from 90% to 99%. Thank you.